Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on my YouTube channel. Okay, um, I've got something really special for you here. Uh, I've got a two-part series uh, that I put together. Um, I created these videos for basically hardcore homeowners who are definitely planning on finishing the basement themselves and are looking for as much in-depth information as they can get their hands on to digest, to make sure that they got all the tools they need mentally, physically, to tackle their basement project by themselves. So, so we're going from an empty basement, cleaned out, concrete floor, nothing, on, nothing down there at all, uh, and we're going to walk you through all the way up to the drywall stage. That means we're going to get all the framing done, we're going to get all the mechanical work in there, the HVAC, the plumbing, the electric, um, structured wiring, everything that goes into a basement up to, leading up to the drywall in part one. So uh, let's get started here. We're going to jump over to the job. Uh, I'm going to be with my brother today and uh, we're going to get down there and we're going to start the, uh, the design of this basement here this morning, the layout. This video I think uh, is like two hours plus long so again you might want to watch it in stages. Um, if you're not into a long video, if you're not into getting this in-depth into basement finishing then this is definitely not going to be for you but for you guys that are actually planning on finishing your basement yourself I think you're really really going to enjoy this video so let's get started. Okay guys, uh, just got down to the job here. Take you around back here. Okay, this is an exposed basement, so it'll be easy for us to get our, our tools and our lumber in here this morning. Right. And the homeowners have this one really cleaned out. Most excellent for us here this morning. Look at that, wide open. Now this isn't a huge basement. It's about a medium sized job for us. I think the finished square footage on the actual plan is about 900 square feet down here. But you can see you got a center set of steps that come down right into the middle of the basement. And about five, six feet away from that front wall. Got two support columns that we have to work around. Uh, since it's an exposed basement, we got a six foot slider, or that might be a five foot slider, a five foot sliding door that we'll have to frame around and two full size windows. And then our mechanical stuff up here, we've got all grouped together nicely uh, by the builder. We got the water heater, the furnace, Behind the water heater, you can see the gas. There's a gas manifold back there. All that's going to be put into a nice little storage closet. And over in this corner, we got the sump pump, which we're going to be bu building into a little 45 degree angle closet, unfinished utility closet. And right beside that, we've got the radon. All right, the radon's coming up out of the floor. And right here is the radon meter. All right, so we're going to be working around those obstacles as well. First thing we're going to do here this morning is we're going to be taking our drawing. And I hope you guys can see this. I hope it's coming coming through here in the basement. The lighting's terrible down here. Uh, you see we got a, uh, a TV family room area. We've got a brew area, which is really just a sink. It's going to be, makes beer, so it's going to be using this as a brew area here. Got that closet right here that I was telling you about with the furnace and the water heater in it. There's that little corner angle wall right there. It's going to have the sump pump in it. Come down the stairs. Over here in this corner, there's going to be a, a closet. Like a, I guess we call it a kid's closet. An activity area. And over in this far, far corner here, when you come down the steps, there's a door that goes into a bathroom with a four-foot shower, toilet, and a 30-inch vanity, and a little living closet. Behind the bathroom, we got a little storage area that you actually have to come into to a in through a door over here behind the steps, walk right under behind the steps and into this area here in this unfinished space here. We will also be putting our sewage ejector which is going to run all the plumbing for the bathroom. So that's going to be in this unfinished storage closet here. <clears throat> and then the main area out here is uh, where they're going to spend most of their time. You know, you've got the two windows in the door out here. This is uh, the TV family area and the TV will be on this wall here. So this is our one big open area right here where I guess They'll be spending most of their time here. And then they got the activity area here, which is more like a play area for the kids with the closet over here. So we'll be taking that drawing and our chalk line this morning and we'll be going around and we'll be snapping our lines on the floor. What we'll do is we'll go around the whole perimeter first and we'll lay out all the exterior walls. And then we'll come back in and we'll lay out the interior walls, which is this wall here and the stairway walls 
and uh, the bathroom walls, the linen closet, all these little walls over here, and then the closet wall over here. It might take a homeowner, someone like yourself, if you've never done this before, it might take you an entire weekend to lay it out to make sure that everything's right. But this much I can tell you for sure. This is one of the most important parts of the project. All right, laying these walls out is critical to the rest of the project. This is the beginning of the foundation for the whole project. If these lines that we snap for these, for these walls are wrong, the whole job screwed. Okay, so, I mean, truly, this is such an important part of the job, so much more important than most people think it is. Um, you never want to go back and tear walls out, so you want to make sure from day one, when you lay out these wall lines, when you're snapping these lines on the floor, you want to be darn sure that that's where you want your finished walls to be, because there ain't no going back after you start pounding them up and covering them chalk lines on the floor, you know, if you don't like what the positioning of the wall is, you're going to be ripping it back out. And that is just a, a terrible thing to do. It's a, it's a terrible waste of time and materials. Take your time with the layout. Take your time with, with this part of the project. If it takes you the entire weekend to do it in your spare time, then so be it. But make sure that before you begin to, you know, plug in the saw, turn on the radio, strap that tool belt on and start cutting lumbers to, to cover these layout marks on your floors that you like the position of the walls because from here on out, after those lines are, are put on the floor, that is your finished project. All we're going to do then is cover all these chalk lines with walls. So this is really, really an important part of any project, whether you're remodeling your basement or uh, your kitchen or if you're, you know, if you're building a, building a home, whatever it is, wherever you're going to be framing, wherever you're going to be laying out lines for walls, this is critical. So uh, I'll kind of step you through it as we do it here this morning and show you how we begin to do this, how we begin to take the marks off that drawing and get them down the floor and start snapping. So, okay, one other thing that I wanted to show you here real quick before we start laying it out. This basement was pre-plumbed for a bathroom by the builder. Uh, the pipes were put in before they poured this basement floor uh, for a toilet and a vent line and a sink line and all that. Um, but unfortunately, like in most cases, the homeowners hate the location that where the where the builder roughed it in. It just doesn't work for their layout, for their plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the original plumbing put in by the builder. So let me spin the camera around here and I'll show you what the builder did and I'll show you where we've redesigned to put the bathroom so that it works better with the floor plan. All right, so right over here, guys, you can see, um, if, again, if you've watched any of my videos about bathroom plumbing or whatnot, um, a lot of my videos are centered on this item right here, which is the sewage ejector. All right, this is the pit that the sewage ejector grinder will go in, and uh, all the bathroom waste water will end up in that pit, which is below the floor. All right, put in by the builder. They also had a, uh, a sink line here, is what I'm presuming. Would have been for a sink, and this would have been for a toilet over here. Um, just in a terrible location, really, because it's kind of out here in this nice living space where you where you wouldn't want to box off a bathroom out here. It's kind of out in the middle of everything too, which the location of the bathroom should be somewhat private. If we would put the bathroom right here, you'd be coming right out into the play area and right out into the right out into the main living area. And I, I just think it's a, a bad location for a bathroom. The homeowners agreed, so we designed the bathroom to be over here. You'll come down the steps and there'll be a door right at the bottom to the right here where you'll go straight into the bathroom over here. Right over here, we're going to have a, uh, a four-foot shower, a linen closet, and over here, the toilet and a 30-inch vanity. Okay, so when you come out of the bathroom, you'll be coming out private at the base of the steps here. And then you almost you have to come out here and turn around to get out into the action to get over here to the TV area and whatnot. Okay, so the bathroom is going to be kind of around the corner over there at the base of the steps now. So if you've got a situation where the builder has already put your plumbing in the floor and, you know, the, the, he, t he sold you on it when you bought the house or you bought the house from somebody else and they said, yeah, the, the basement has plumbing already to go for a bathroom if you ever want to finish the basement. And, and if you just don't like the location of these pipes, of, of, of what the builder did here, forget about it. It didn't work for us. It didn't work for the homeowners. So we have uh, elected to move the bathroom right over there in that corner. And... Uh, here you would come down the stairs. There's a door at the bottom of the stairs here. You come in and there's that four foot shower, the linen closet, the toilet, and the 30 inch vanity. Uh, they originally had the bathroom right over here, which would have squeezed off this whole room here. You'd, you'd have been so close to the stairway wall, there would have been no usable space left over here. So putting the bathroom here in effect would have just killed this whole 
you know, basically quarter of the basement or more of the basement, it would have killed it. So by, by removing it from this area here and putting it over here, we made the bathroom more private and we opened up more space. It really starts with the design. Even before you get to the first day of the job here, as, as we are today, uh, for the layout, it, the, the, the project really starts between your ears. You know, what do you, what do you want? You know, what, what zones do you want? What, what wish list do you have? What, what's on your list? What are you going to check off? What boxes are you checking off? Do you want a bathroom? Do you want a bedroom? Do you want an office? Do you want a play area? Do you want a, do you want a home gym? Do you want a home theater? You know, you, you, you got to know what you want first, and then you have to design it. And then once the design's done, it turns into what we have down here. All right, and really, once this has been created, the job can start. This is really, um, doing the design is really the beginning of the basement project. If you're interested in designing your own basement, you might want to check out the design program over at the Basement Finishing University where I step you through, you know, step by step, how I go into a basement that has no design, what I look for, how I work around all the different obstacles and how I design the basements for my clients. And I'm sure that would help you if you've never done it before with the design of your basement. So again, that's over at the Basement Finishing University, which uh, I think there's a link in the description below this video as well if you want to go check that out. Okay, so we're gonna be using our Hupar laser. I hope I'm saying that right. But before we get to that, we've got to actually get the marks on the floor using our tape measure and our pencil. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around first and I'm going to lay out the exterior walls. Now, when I'm laying out exterior walls and I've got this wall wrap, all right, this is, this is the wall wrap that fluffs out about two to three inches from the wall put in by the builder. All right, so this is the wall wrap. There's your concrete wall behind it. This stuff's about two and a half, three inches thick. I mean, you can see right over here along the door here, another example of that stuff. You know, right there, it fluffed out. It's three and a half, almost. Yeah, it's almost three and a half inches. So I think we're gonna come out six. Now it does compress a little. It's okay if our walls are pushing on it lightly, but we don't wanna have to smash it back there to, to be able to stand our walls up in front of it. So we're gonna come out six inches, which is an inch and a half more than we normally come out if we're, if we're coming off the concrete wall. So John, why don't you go down there in the corner once and uh, show them how, I'm gonna show them how you're gonna come out there six inches and make that mark. All right, so you see he's pressed up against the side wall over there and he's coming out six inches. All right. And he's making a crow's foot right there. So that mark right there is six inches off of that back wall right there. Okay? So he's going to do that in every corner of every wall in the basement. But he's making another six and a half inch mark coming the opposite direction. Okay? So he's got one for each wall. Up the other end of the basement here, he's going to do the same thing. You know, I'm not going to lay out this whole job on camera here, but since we've, uh, since we've shown you how to put the crow's feet on there, we might as well go ahead and grab that chalk line there, John, if there's enough chalk in it. We'll show, show you a snap in one line here, and then the rest of the basement's just going to be rinse and repeat. All right, so we're using a regular chalk line from, uh, from Home Depot. This one is a, uh, uh, this one's a boss stitch, all right? Doesn't matter what kind you use. Just make sure it has a good line in it. You want to get one with, a, with an extra thick chalk line in it. We're using red chalk. Right, go ahead, John. So he's going to go up that end of the basement. And he's going to get on his crow's foot. And I'm going to come up to my end here. And uh, John will snap it for us. Okay, I'm right through my crow's foot. And John up the other end is on his. John, are you ready? Yeah. All right, go ahead and snap it. Okay. All right, so there's a six-inch line. You want to make sure that it's, you know, you've got enough chalk on the floor. That looks like a pretty good line. All right, and that is the line that our first wall is gonna sit on. All right, and we're gonna sit on which side, John? The back side. So you see we're putting an X on the side of the line that we want our wall to actually sit on. All right, so there is wall number one, the crow's feet six inches off the wall, and the line snapped. Now, you can see we've got a whole bunch of exterior walls to go around here. We're gonna do the same thing on this front wall here. And all these marks are being 
are being put on the floor uh, according to our computer design that we did on the computer. All right. Whatever the Im computer image says, whatever the finished design says, that's exactly what we're going to be doing down here. We're not going to be changing anything at this point. That that plan that we have over there is is made in concrete. All right. And there you can see he's got his six inch mark off that corner and his X set to the side that we want the wall to sit. And we'll just snap a line from there all the way down to the corner down there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish that. We're gonna get all, all of our other six inch marks. We're gonna snap all of our exterior walls. Let, let me go ahead and we'll, we'll finish laying this out and then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. What I'm doing right now is I'm laying out the bathroom because they are interior walls. All right, so there's our bathroom again. There you see I got to lay out a linen closet. I got to lay out a little wing wall, two wing walls for a four foot shower. All right, and then I got to build the back bathroom wall itself. All right, so that's what I'm doing right now. You see that linen closet up there in the right, right corner there. All right, so I have... Uh, Going down here on the floor, you see I've written linen in a circle there, and I've got my linen closet walls laid out. All right, the door is going to be right here, and there's the depth of the shower right there. The showers, shower wall is 36 inches out from the exterior wall because the shower is 34 inches, and I want the shower to be recessed back in behind the, re the uh, linen closet about two inches. Okay, so there's my linen closet but uh, that's the way I'm standing right now there's there's my linen closet right there in the corner and there it is right down there on the floor okay plan floor plan floor all right whatever it says on this plan well however it's laid out in this design is exactly where I'm going to be putting my interior lines and the rest of this basement all right so exterior walls first, and then come in, find your interior walls, use your usual plan, and then lay out your interior walls using your exterior wall lines that you've already put down on the floor as reference points so that everything's nice and square. And I get into this in a lot more detail in my framing video series over at the Basement Finishing University. Guys, if you, if you really want to learn how to lay it out professionally, I get much more explicit than I am in this quick video. I don't know how quick this video is going to end up being, but I'm trying to give you a general overview of how to start a basement from day one with the layout on the floor, okay, to get it 100% ready for the actual physical framing part of the project to begin. So let me wrap up this uh, interior wall layout, get them all snapped on the floor, and then we'll turn the camera back on and we'll take one more look at, the, uh, at all the wall lines before... We start transferring all of our new wall lines up to the ceiling, all right, up to the ceiling with our green laser level. So, be back in a couple minutes. All right, so let's take a look at what we have over here first. We're going to go over here. We're going to look at this little 45 degree wall we have over here. He's going to have a sink right here. So, we put a little 45 degree wall instead of squaring that off. The uh, homeowner asked me to bring that back on a 45 just to take the edge off there. So we'll show you this here. And uh, then we'll show you this wall that we framed right here. We changed this because we moved this wall out a couple more inches because of some overhead ductwork. And instead of having two doors in this wall, now we're going to have one six-foot door right in the center. So let's take a look at that first. Okay, so over here... We got our 45 degree wall. It's really not a 45 degree wall. It's whatever worked out for me to get past the edge of the uh, sump pump. So this apex out here. Then we brought it across on some sort of an angle. I brought it back out and I squared it back to the wall. So it comes out a foot, goes down about three feet, turns on an angle, comes out, turns back on an angle and goes back over to that wall. Now the reason that I did this here, this three foot section and this one foot back is because we found inside the wall, the radon, the radon stuck out off the wall about eight inches. So I had to come out eight inches and uh, because we also had this drain line here and this radon pipe here, we just fit them all inside a corner like that. All right, so I worked my way around those obstacles as best I could. All right, and this is where the the, uh, 
the laundry sink's going to be. I guess you'd call it, um, you know, whatever utility sink he's going to have for his for making his beer right there. And over here, because we had to come out past that ductwork up there, I had to actually come towards the camera, towards me, a, a couple more inches, which made it so that I could put a uh, just a six foot door, which runs from there to right there. A six foot door will enable me when they're both open to go in there, change the furnace filter. Uh, service the service the, the furnace itself and also if the, if the water heater ever goes which it will eventually they'll be able to cut it loose and drag it out that six foot door so instead of putting two doors on there we went to one door anytime I could do one door instead of two on, on, on a wall that's only about 12 foot long it's it's a better situation so one six foot door there all right so that's those two areas all right and then we might as well leave this area we'll come back over here I'll show you how we frame underneath the stairs and laid out for our bathroom wall and our four foot shower and our linen closet and then our door coming into the bathroom and we also um, laid out for this long wall here along the stairway because remember we don't have any stairway walls here so we're gonna we had to lay out for that and this section of stairway wall here which will turn into an open railing from here to the end of the steps right here but we still have a bottom plate that'll come the whole way down to the end of the steps so let's go look at this little setup over there all right, so here we have our, our door going to the bathroom right here, which is also in the same wall as the stairway wall. And you can follow that down there. You see that red line goes the whole way up, just about to that pole down there. All right, so we had to lay that wall out. And the way we got this wall was up on the ceiling, we found where our wall was gonna have to connect up here so that we had four inches from the edge in. All right, I measured four inches from the opening in the stairway in on both ends, okay? If you look up there, you can actually see my crow's foot right there. That's four and a half inches in, uh, half, uh, or four inches in rather, a half inch for drywall, which is already on the stairway wall, and then three and a half inches for our framing, because the two by four is three and a half inches wide. So I came out four inches there, and if we come down a little bit further, down this end here, I also went up there and I made another, another four inch mark right there off the edge of the stairway opening. We snapped it up there first on the ceiling, and then I used my laser level, and we shot it down onto the floor. All right, and that wall just goes straight down past the steps and turns into the bathroom door wall, okay? I hope that makes sense to you. So now let's step inside the bathroom. Over here, we've got our linen closet, which is 36 inches from the back wall out to the front. Well, it's 36 inches because my shower is 34 inches and you can see my shower line coming across here is set back in from the 36 inch line two inches you see that little two inches there it's 36 out here it's 34 in there that way they can get a piece of corner bead on here when they do the drywall and the, and the tub looks recessed back in around the corner a little bit so there's my four foot shower i left another one foot of dead space here so that my shower would be pulled out of the corner one foot because my toilet that you can see I drew on the floor there is right beside the shower so instead of running the shower all the way in tight beside the toilet tank I pulled the shower out one foot which makes it easier to access the shower when you you know when you go past the, the, the edge of the toilet because we're gonna have an elongated toilet which is 28 inches out off the wall and we didn't want to be tripping over the bowl getting in the shower all right and it's just like that on the uh, on the blueprint as well over on our design and then we've got our toilet, and right down here on the end, we've got our 30-inch vanity. All right, so that's all laid out. And that became our back wall of our bathroom right there, and that's all laid out as well. Right behind the toilet, which you see right here, right behind it, I've drawn a circle on the floor there. That's going to be the new sewage ejector location. Because recall, our old one used to be way over there in a not-so-good spot. So we're going to re-jack re the floor, reinstall the sewage ejector right here, which is right directly behind the center of the toilet. So that toilet's going to flush, boom, right into the ejector pit, okay, right into the ejector. In our shower drain, which is over here, we're going to trench the floor right across, and we're going to tie in to that piece of pipe between the sewage ejector and the toilet underneath the floor. All right, and that's, that's our drain line set up for this bathroom, which really has nothing to do with laying out a basement, but it's laying out the plumbing, so I guess it is part of the layout. 
All right, so there is all of the bathroom framing and our stair walls. And the last thing I'll show you is, is we're, we're wanting to get into this small storage area that's right over there where my ladder is behind the bathroom. All right, because this is one big area out here on this side of these poles. All right, so th there's a wall that's going to go right down here where my where red line is. It's going to go from this pole right across and all the way down to the other end to the exterior wall here. All right, so that is my living room wall. All right, where these poles are actually going to be inside this wall. I've laid it out so they go right right inside this 2x4 wall and right up underneath that beam. So we'll be nailing the top of our wall right into the bottom of that beam. All right, so since we have a solid wall right here, there was no way to get into that storage area between the bathroom and the living room wall. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in right underneath the stairs. I put a 36-inch door here, so we're going to open this door, come right in underneath the steps, which incidentally in here will be all unfinished. It'll still just look like that underneath here. When we open this door, we'll be able to open that 36-inch door, come straight in, and get right in here to the storage room that has our sewage ejector pit right there, okay? So now we're on the other side of the bathroom wall. All right, and that's pretty much the whole layout. All right, so that's, that's pretty much the layout. All right, we talked about the bathroom, the stairwells, the door right here going under the stairs into this area that we couldn't access any other way because the living room wall here is a solid wall. And they didn't want a door here because they want to put, you know, they just didn't want a door along this wall in this area at all. So we put the door going in under the stairs. All right. And that's pretty much it for the layout on the floor. Now what we have to do is we have to take all these lines, okay, exterior, interior, bathroom walls. Uh, I didn't show you this little closet over here, so let's take a look at that. But as soon as, we're, as soon as I turn the camera off here, we're going to get our laser level out. And we're going to start lasering all these lines up onto the ceiling. Okay, so this closet is eight feet from here over to our exterior wall, and it's going to be 24 inches finished deep, and that's got a five-foot door in it. You see, I got a five-foot door written right there in that circle, and that was the only other framing that, uh, that we had to do with the interior walls. So that, it, now we're 100% laid out on the floor. That took us about an hour, uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer all these exterior and interior lines up to our drywall ceiling, which, you know, in a way it's nice because we can snap some really pretty lines on that drywall. If you don't have drywall ceilings, you're snapping it across the bottom of the floor joists, which I've showed you in other videos. But we're going to take our Hupar laser level now. All right. And I've got a video just on this laser. Um, there's so many different types of lasers out there. I mean, this, this was, you know, I'll be honest with you, the reason I bought this one is just had a good price. I think it's like 126 bucks. It's got a really, really bright, bright green laser line. Um, it also shoots up on the ceiling as well as around the walls. It's got two rotating. It's got a rotating laser on the outside and on the top. Okay, that that way you can you can use it to. Uh, and it's 360 degrees. When you have rotating lasers, they go the whole way around. They make a 360 degree circle of light. And this will do that horizontally and vertically. Now, a lot of other lasers will just shoot out in one direction, straight out and straight up, but they won't go 360 degrees, all right? They'll be 180 degrees, 140 degrees. They, they won't go the whole way around the room because their lasers don't rotate. If you're looking for a good laser, always look for lasers that rotate, that spin on an axis so that you can get uh, a 360-degree circle of light which will shoot it the whole way around the walls or, and the whole way up to the ceiling into the floor, which is really necessary in order to lay out walls properly in the basement or any, any construction project that, for that matter. Uh, to do laser walls, you have to, uh, you have, to have the, rotating, the rotating lasers. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get set up for that. I'm going to set up my laser on the first red line on the floor here, and I'm going to project it up onto the ceiling. And once I get it set up, I will turn the camera back on and I'll show you the laser set on the line and projecting the line up to the ceiling so that we can go up and put our crow's feet on the ceiling and transfer the wall line from the floor up to the ceiling. And once we do that to all the interior and exterior walls, we're done. We're ready to turn on the radio, fire up the saw, and actually start building walls. So uh, let me get that set up and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we got our laser set up right down our red line on the floor. And I do have another video here 
where I show you how I set this up. But what I've done is I've turned the laser on and I've positioned this green laser right over top of a red line that looks just like this. It's three and a half inches over here. You can't see it because the laser is over top of it. But we're right over top of it. All right, so I had to keep turning this laser until I got the laser perfectly down that red line heading in both directions, okay? Now what the laser's doing is it's projecting straight up, plumb up to the ceiling. I'll pan up there, you can see. There's our line, all right? And it's exactly above, plumb above the one that's on the floor. Now what my brother did up this end is right where the laser is in the corner there, he's made a crow's foot right there with his pencil. Right on the crow's foot there is the laser line. All right, so we're going to be snapping a red chalk line from that point of his crow's foot, which is right on, right above the line on the floor. All right, and then we came up this end, and up there you can see he's put another crow's foot right on the laser line. Okay, now we can turn the laser off. We don't need it anymore. It did its job. It's projected us up two points that are exactly above the line on the floor. So when we snap our red line up on the ceiling, that red line on the ceiling will match the red line on the floor. That's what we did here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this laser off, we're gonna grab our chalk box, and we're gonna snap a line between those two crow's feet. Once we snap that line between the crow's feet, we'll have, we'll have a line on the ceiling that perfectly matches the one on the floor, all right? And we're gonna be doing that to every single line that we put on the floor down here, all right? We got about I don't know, 15 or so walls, some long, some short. So we're gonna go around and we're gonna project all those lines on the floor up to the ceiling and snap them all. And once we do that, we'll be ready to start building walls because our layout will be 100% complete and that's all there is to it. And you start building on top of these lines, that's it guys. I mean, that is your project. So that little simple plan that I, that I printed off out of a simple computer program, all right, that plan and my tape measure and our chalk box and our laser this morning have set up this whole job for what this job will become. All right, so don't mess up this part. Make sure you have a solid design first before you even get down here to do this. Make sure you have a solid design, all done 100% that you love. Bring it down into the basement and then do what we're doing down here today. All right, do exactly what we're doing down here today and you'll have a perfectly laid out basement. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead with my bro transfer all these up there it'll take us probably another believe it or not about another hour to get these all up there and get them snapped and once we get it all done i'll turn the camera back on and i'll show you what it all turned out to be i'll show you those final lines and we'll talk one more time and we'll, and we'll wrap this up okay just to show you what we did in our transferring of the lines uh remember we were coming coming out of foot going down about 36 and then into an angle wall then straight back uh, if we project up on the ceiling, you can see we're coming across into our angle wall and we're turning and then we're, we're going to go from this line here back to the other line and then the whole way down the other end. All right, so we basically just turn the laser on and uh, we follow the lines on the floor and you can see it was very easy to put that angle up there because all we did was shoot the laser up to the ceiling and it's exactly what it was on the floor. Yep, so we came right off of our angle wall, right around behind our where our beer beverage sink's gonna be. Uh, that line that you see right there, running along the line set right there, that line right there is the closet wall. All right, it was the closet wall that was right down here that ran right down here to this corner here. All right, and then, then we had to snap some lines up above where there was no drywall. So what we did was, I don't know if, how well the camera will pick that up, but we snapped right to the bottom of the ductwork just to use this as a reference point. Okay, and then we jumped over to the beam. And we put a little bit of line right across the beam. And then we went right back up to the drywall ceiling again. All right, so what we were doing there is we were following, we were following this line we had right here. Okay. And we shot that up. And again, when we stand our wall up, we'll shoot it to the floor. And we'll get the top real close to that line that's on the bottom of the ductwork. That way we'll know that our wall's perfectly plumb. You know, straight up and down. We'll shoot right to the bottom of that beam. We'll know that our line's perfectly up and down. Then we'll jump back up to the full height right there. All right, because we'll be building our wall in different stages of height here. And I've got videos on the channel that show you how we do that as well. All right, so we don't stick build our walls one stud at a time. We build the entire walls on the floor. 
and then we stand them up in one big wall section. All right, so down here we've got our closet laid out on the floor, eight foot by two foot deep. Jump up to the ceiling, and there you can see our closet is laid out on the ceiling, turning back down here at eight feet. All right, that line right there matches that wall line right there, okay? And then our last jog of the journey here is this long, about 25 foot wall here, running the whole way down to the other exterior wall. And that matched this long one right here on the floor that ran the whole way down to that exterior wall. All right. And then the bathroom, more the same, guys. We just took the lines that we had on the floor and we transferred them up to the ceiling. All right, so we'd know we would have perfect walls. It took us about another 45 minutes to an hour to get all of our lines up there. And if you, you can notice as well, we we put X's up there on the side of the line that our wall is going to be sitting on. All right, we do that on the ceiling. And we also do that down here on the floor. All right, always mark the side that your wall is going to be on with, with an X. In case you're not the one finishing the framing, you got another crew coming in or somebody else helping you, or you forget um, exactly where things were, those X's will remind you where, where to uh, position your wall on the floor and the ceiling. Okay, so that's pretty much it for going from the print to your floor to your ceiling for your layout. Um, I know that this video didn't get into the tiny little nitty gritties of, the, of all the situations that we're doing here, but so, I mean, it gives it to you in a roundabout way. We're not getting down to perfect brass tacks here, but this should give you the concept, you know, give you a broad spectrum on exactly what we're doing. We're going from that print that came out of the computer to the floor to the ceiling. Okay guys, so it's day two. Yesterday we laid it out, got everything ready. It was about one o'clock in the afternoon. We said, hey, we're taking the day. <laughs> we were out of there. We could have started framing yesterday, but I wanted to keep this in daily, daily slices for you. Uh, today we're going to start the framing. Uh, I showed you yesterday that we got the lines on the floor from our design using our print. We got them up to the ceiling using our laser. Didn't really show you all the fine detail ins and outs of us doing that with the laser, but I do have a video here on the channel that shows me using that Hupar laser and I show you how I transfer my line exactly from the floor up to the ceiling and then snap my line. So you might want to check that out if you want to see how we actually got the lines from the floor to the ceiling. But anyway, today we're going to be covering those lines on the floor and the ceiling. Um, we're going to start our framing today. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go around the exterior of the basement. We're going to do all of our exterior walls the whole way around the basement. All right, uh, we're not going to do any interior wa walls until we have the exterior walls 100% done. Once we get those all done, and I think we got one, two, three, four, five, six of those, we'll get those six done, and then we'll come in to the interior walls, which on this job are the bathroom walls. We got a linen closet in the bathroom, um, and we have two stairway walls as well. So uh, I'm not going to have the camera running all day. I'm just going to you know, film a little bit of us setting up, getting the plates ready, uh, me getting some measurements for the wall studs, and then we'll pop up a couple walls. And when we get, uh, when we start to get it framed up and we have some progress made here, I'll turn the camera back on and you can take a look at what we've got done. So this is day two on this basement. Uh, we've got a three-man crew. I've got my brother and his one son, Nate, and myself. So that's a three-man crew today. Um, and we're figuring we'll probably get the majority of the exterior walls close to being done today but uh because it's just a three-man crew today it'd probably take us two days to get all the all the walls stood up and then we probably got one more day on soffit work which is us covering up all the duct work with our frame we probably have one more day of soffit work and uh, we should have her done in three days so today's tuesday we should be done framing by thursday of this week now if you're a homeowner and you're doing this there's just no possible way that's going to happen because Number one, we're professionals. We do it every day, and we're going to be moving at a much faster speed than you than you could or pop, probably can. And uh, you know, norm, normally homeowners are doing the work by themselves, or maybe with a friend. Maybe it's a two-man crew, and it's going to take you a week to maybe several weeks to frame your basement realistically if you're doing it on weekends and part time. So uh, that's the game plan for us uh, for the next three days. We're going to be doing the framing. We're going to be covering those lines on the floor and the ceiling that you saw me. Uh, work on yesterday on day one and uh, as we progress um, I'll keep you uh, up to speed and we'll, we'll we'll do some uh, some walking around with the camera and we'll talk about what we got accomplished here today so uh, I'll see you in a little bit okay we got our saw guy set up over here he's got a stack of two by fours on the saw horses 
All right, so we're starting with our exterior walls. We're going to start with this wall right here inside uh, what's our family room TV area. You can see I've got two plates on the floor there. They're 16 foot long. We always start with 16 foot lumber. Uh, people ask me a lot, should I get eight? Can I, can I work with just eight footers because I can fit them in my van? Can I get all eight foot lumber? Can I, can I use 10 foot lumber instead of 16 foot lumber? And the answer is no, you shouldn't. You should never use anything less than 16 foot lumber to lay out your plates, all right? You don't want to be putting together a bunch of sections of wall. You don't want to put two eight foot sections together here. Um, it's a stronger wall, it's a straighter wall, it's an easier wall to build if you just use longer lumber. If you can't transport it to your drop job yourself, then you should uh, call Home Depot or some other lumber yard, just have it delivered to your house. All right, so we got two plates. I've already laid them out. I do have detailed videos on how to lay out these plates, so I'm not gonna get into it in this video here, but you can see I started in the corner here with a flat stud, uh, one on edge on the end, and then one turn sideways, which will receive our first wall that'll be coming in from this direction. All right, so that's, that's my layout, and then I'm every 16 inches set ahead with my layout. If you wanna see how I lay these plates out, I've got a six part uh, framing series here on my YouTube channel. Check that out. Uh, it's a lot of really good stuff in those six videos. Um, if, you, if you can digest what's in those six videos, you'll know how to lay out all of your plates and you'll know how to build these walls that we're building here today. So check out that six part framing series and you're gonna learn a ton from that. All right, today, this, this video is not about that. Basically, the series that I'm doing right now is just how we get from point A to point B, point A being starting the job to point B, which is drywall, okay? Everything that's gonna happen between Day one, leading up to when I call my drywaller in here, is what this series is going to cover, okay? And then we're going to jump over to a, another series where we're going to take it from finished drywall the whole way to the end of the job. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get these plates down here. I've already ordered the studs from the cut man over there. Uh, John, how many, how many studs do we got going in this wall? Did I give you a count yet? Fifteen. Okay, we got fifteen studs. What was the length? 101 and 7 8. 101 and 7 8. Okay, so we got 15 studs ordered from the cut guy to go between these two plates. Nate, you want to you want to spread them plates out for us? Okay, whenever we build our walls, we always keep the white plate, the regular lumber up against the wall where we laid them out and we bring the green plate back to the length of the studs. All right? The reason we do that is because we build our walls in one big section. All right? One big section. We don't build it, uh, we, don't, we don't nail the bottom plate to the floor and nail the top plate to the ceiling and then go and put studs in individually. That's called stick building and we don't do that because then you're toe nailing your, your studs into the wall. We build everything laying down flat on the floor in one big section, generally 16 foot sections until we get to smaller areas where 16 doesn't work anymore. But we always start on a long wall with a 16 foot section. All right, so he's going to go down there and put these 15 studs in position. Everywhere that we've got them marked, he's going to, he's going to slide a stud in there. And uh, we'll put all 15 studs in. We'll, we'll nail them through the top and bottom plates. Once the wall is completely ready to go and be stood up, I'll turn the camera back on and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at sliding that up into position and, and fastening it to the floor and the ceiling. Wall number one, up in position. All right, that's a 16 foot section, or just short of 16. We didn't need the whole 16, but uh, it's like 15 foot, a half inch, something like that, the actual measurement. So we've got that in, we've got it shot to the floor, we got it shot to the ceiling, we've got it plumb and level. Uh, looks real good. All right, so now what we're doing is building wall number two. It's just a little eight foot wall. That's gonna be the back wall in this bathroom over here. We're gonna pop that in there next. Okay, wall number two up. That's the back side behind the shower bathroom wall. So we got our two walls up there. There's no wall in between these two walls right here. Notice we have a about a 10 foot gap here. That's because this is bordering a storage room here and this is unfinished in between those two walls. So no wall here. Now we're getting ready to build a almost a 30 foot wall. What we've done is we have two 16 foot plates that come right down to here. All right, there's the seam. It's 16 from there all the way down. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to go from here with another set of plates. But they're about 12 and a half feet to get down where our next wall is going to stop and start. Right down here, we're going to be turning right here. So we stopped it right there on the end, okay? So we're going to build this in one long wall. All right, go ahead and stack those plates, guys. Stack your plates up for measuring your stud lengths. Always put your bottom plate down, your top plate on top of it. And then we're going to measure off the top of those two plates, get our wall studs, and fill in the blanks here and put this 30 some foot wall up in one section. Okay, we got ourselves a heck of a wall going here. It's like we're laying railroad tracks here. We got a 16 and a 12 and a half foot wall together. We're going to create one long wall. We're going to stand this up in one 30 foot section. All right, we're not nailing plates to the floor. Again, I keep recapping on this, but please don't nail your bottom plate to a red line on the floor, then go up and nail your top plate to the ceiling and try to toenail all the studs in between because you're going to be building weak, crooked, crappy walls, all right? Please don't do that. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack from other YouTubers and maybe some other contractors that do it that way, but look, and you've been doing it as long as we have, over 30 some years. Uh, we tried every way to frame. Believe me, if there was a faster, if there was a faster, easier way, we would be doing it. Your walls are stronger this way and they're straighter. All right, and you can build them in one section. Even if there's obstacles overhead. Now this particular wall here, we're going up to a perfectly flat drywall ceiling and connecting. So we don't have any ups and downs on this wall that we have to contend with. Over here, we run underneath a soffit and there was some plumbing and gas lines up there and a beam, so we came down about 10 inches here on the end. The rest of that's going to be filled in inside a soffit up in there, so it doesn't matter that you know we have that gap right there in the corner. You can see that wall doesn't go all the way over to that white pipe, but that's okay. It doesn't have to. We just needed to drop underneath that beam, and I just came back to the next available stud and cut it out there. All right, just made the framing easier. All right, so that one had two heights to it. It had the full height and then we dropped down 10 inches on the end to get underneath that beam obstacle. Over here again, uh, we're going perpendicular, not perpendicular, we're going parallel rather with the floor joists that's above that drywall. So we had to put what's called cats up there, wood blocking. You can see I've got one, two, three wood blocks up there. Uh, we snapped our line, ceiling line on those wood blocks and that gave us something solid to nail our top plate to. Otherwise, our wall would have been positioned in an area where above that drywall there would have been no lumber. We would have been between floor joists that are running parallel with the wall. So we had to use blocking up there to catch the top of our wall. Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, again, I've got a complete framing series here on the channel that you can watch. It's a six-part series and it'll explain to you more about why we do that with the blocking on some walls and other walls we don't. All right, so we're going to go ahead with this, with this wall here. And now when we get it up and take another shot, I'll come back and we'll talk about that wall. Okay guys, let me show you one thing here and some of these walls that I've got stood up here that's going to help you tremendously when you get to your interior wall building. Alright, I'm going to give you uh, the correct way over here on these walls to put in your framing in these exterior walls to receive your interior walls pre-installed, okay, pre-installed. So you're not running around later putting all these corner nails in for drywall. I'm going to show you how you put the flat uh, 2x4s in the wall to receive walls that are coming off of those exterior walls that are considered interior walls. So let me spin the camera around and I'll point a couple of them out to you. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is show you some interior wall lines. All right, we've got a set of, we got a set of lines here, three and a half inches apart. All right, this is the back side of my bathroom wall. It's going to be coming across towards the exterior wall. Okay, so, so you can see this is a wall right here coming in to this wall. So what I've done is I've put a two by four in here flat ways, all right, right beside a stud. All right, and then when I stand this wall up, I already have a nice flat stud in here that is gonna give me not only a perfect surface to nail my next wall to, but it also sticks past the wall line a little bit. All right, the wall's gonna come up off that, off that line like this, straight up this stud. I still have this much of the stud for drywall, okay? So my corner nailer is really already done there, all right, for my, for my drywall then. All right, right beside it is another little wall. This is a shower wall, this is just a little, 36 inch wall that comes right to here. This is a the shower is going to go between this wall 
and another 36 inch wall right over there. All right, so this little wall is going to come in. Here's another flat stud. All right, it's in there inch and a half ways. Right beside another stud that's in there three and a half inch ways. Okay, already have my flat surface in there. I already have my nailer for my drywall in there. Okay, you always want to put a flat stud wherever your red lines are meeting your your interior red lines are meeting your exterior wall. Wherever there's lines coming into an exterior wall, you put a flat stud in. You can see I did it again right here. There's another set of black lines coming in. Flat stud, nailer on both sides. In the corner over here where my outside wall meets another outside wall, regular stud three and a half inch on the end, another flat stud right beside it. Okay, that's the correct way to frame your interior walls to your exterior walls. You get a perfect tie-in, you have a perfect flat surface, and it's all pre-installed. When we're done framing these walls, we're done. We don't have to run around like chickens with our heads cut off looking for places where we need corner nailers for drywall. It's already going to be done because we're pre-installing this kind of framing as we go. I hope that helps you out. I mean, that's a really good tip. It took me a long time to figure that out. Uh, a lot of the people that taught me initially in this business didn't think about things like that, and I learned from better pros than myself years later how to how to frame correctly and that's one of the techniques that's really important when you're framing your walls how to intersect interior and exterior walls using the flat stud all right the 32 foot wall is up you notice we framed right in front of the windows we always cut our windows out after we frame because the concrete floor is really never level it can be off as much as an inch in 32 feet so that way uh, you know if we cut them out beforehand and frame it, stand the wall up, our sills and our header pieces will be running downhill. So cut them out afterwards, use your levels and just cut them out and header them in after you're done framing. I did cut the door out and I put my cripplers above the door. The cripplers are those short studs that go up off the header piece. All right, so we got cripplers above our door, doors cut out. All right, that wall's up. So we got our 32 foot wall up, we got our front viewing wall which will be our TV wall done and we got our bathroom wall in there behind our tub and next we're going to knock out this one right up here on the very end by the yellow ladder between the ladder and the uh, uh, in the broom there we've got about a seven foot wall that we're going to put in next okay guys so there's that seven foot section of wall going up again we built everything laying flat on the floor we're not stick building, we're nailing through our bottom and top plates straight down into our studs. That's the strongest way to do it, the straightest way to do it. Um, okay, we're ready to slide that one up. And they slide it back and up. That's why we have the white plate on top when we build them and the green one on the bottom. It's all ready to go to slide straight up and into position. All right. And there goes our, what, fourth wall? Next we'll be building the wall with the six foot door right in front of the water heater and the furnace. I've already got those plates down there. They're laid out and ready to go. I'm going to get some stud measurements here. I'll be right back. All right, there's our furnace wall in there. Again, one wall, one shot. Okay, so we got one, two more long walls that we have to build yet for the exterior walls. We're going to go ahead and do those. I think you guys get the idea here. We're just running around and we're doing all of our exterior walls first. All right, we've got this one over here, which is about a 20 foot wall. And then we've got another roughly 32 foot wall over here as well at the base of the steps here. All right, so we got to get in. Once we have those two walls on, shot in and ready to go, we'll probably come into the bathroom in here and we'll start knocking out some of these small linen closet walls and Get this, uh, get this back wall to the bathroom behind the toilet. There's our toilet on the floor there, drawn in our vanity. Right over there is our four foot shower. We always draw all that stuff on the floor. Uh, and then we have our two stairway walls that we're gonna be building as well after we get these exterior walls done. Okay, all the exterior walls are up. Just wanted to show you guys we're starting to pop in these small walls in the bathroom. Just did a 36 inch shower wall there, another 36 inch shower wall there, and just a little 24 inch wall right here with a uh, 16 inch linen closet door in it. Really small door, really small closet. But we're, uh, we're popping in all of our interior walls now because our exterior walls are all in. Okay, now remember those flat two by fours that I was telling you about that we put in the exterior walls? 
Here we have this 36 inch wall tying into those flat two by fours, all right? There's that flat two by four that I was telling you about and the one beside it, all right? Right in here. This wall here, this 36 inch wall here is, is tying right into that flat two by four right behind it. So it's got solid, solid meat. I didn't nail it yet. So if I spread this apart, you can see right there behind there with the one with the knot in it right there. That's, that's the flat one that I showed you earlier in the video. This wall here is gonna just tie right into that. See how they sandwich together? And then we'll nail them tight together. And then you got a perfectly solid union between your interior wall and your exterior wall. All right, I just wanted to point that out. Again, guys, I have a lot more specific framing instructions in my course. I have uh, a four-part course just on framing over at the Basement Finishing University. All right, it's all part of the uh, overall program that we have there for you guys where we get way more specific about this stuff, but I wanted to give you a general conception of everything that we had to do here today. We'll probably get the majority of this framed here today. I'm going to I'm ready to close off the back of the bathroom right now. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon. We've been here since 7 o'clock, so we're, we're going to have this thing about three-quarter framed in one day here. So, uh, you know, take that into consideration. You know, it doesn't take forever to do this kind of work. If you're doing it for yourself the first time, this might take you two weeks of evenings and weekends. But uh, it's well worth the money saved, and uh, you'll probably enjoy it as well. Framing is actually a lot of fun. As these guys will tell you right here, they're just so happy right now. Look, look at the smile on his face. Look how happy he is. He's blessed. He's being blessed to be here at Framing. Okay, we got our last section of exterior wall going up. And the reason we saved that section for last, uh, and it is exterior, I told you we do all the, the exterior work first. We had our saw horses set up there, and uh, we decided not to move them to the very end. So we're going to be finishing up with that exterior wall here. That's so there's what we got done today. Pretty much all the exterior walls. Um, we got the storage room framed out here on the back side of the bathroom. And back over through the into this bathroom. Walk through the framing here. We got our we got our linen closet framed out. See that right there, our linen closet. We got our four foot shower walls all framed out. All right, that's a 48 inch shower, and between the framing, exactly 48 inches. All right, you never you never figure for drywall because your shower always gets set before drywall. So. When you're framing for a 48 inch shower, it's exactly 48 inches. All right, and we made it 36 inches deep. All right, from the back wall out to the front here, 36, because the shower is actually only 34. And you can see that's my shower line right there, right there on the edge. It's two inches in from the edge. All right, so we'd, we'd like to keep it recessed around the corner at least two inches. All right, center drain on this one. So that's our bathroom framing. We framed our eight foot closet down this end of the room. Just pop that in there. And we're getting ready to stand this last section up right here, which will pretty much complete all of our framing. Um, we got one more wall to frame on this side of the stairway. We'll see. Right. And we'll get That's that tomorrow. The, the so we got a couple walls yet tomorrow yeah, to finish up. I mean, the and then the we're, we're going to jump on to the uh, framing yeah, that's going to cover the ductwork up there it's tomorrow, which is called theory. the soffit framing. We'll have all that done tomorrow. And that'll run all the way down to the furnace there. And then the framing will be complete. So we will be done with the framing tomorrow. So uh, basically two days of framing down here for us. But you can see we got we got quite a few guys down here right now. And uh, we should get this done in one uh, in two days. All right, so uh, we stocked it and laid it out on Monday and Tuesday. Today we've just about got it. I'd say 75, 80 percent framed. And tomorrow we'll finish up the framing. Thursday we'll be on plumbing and electric, and uh, that will be the next phase after our framing is 100 percent completed. Uh, we'll also be back in the storage room jacking that floor open right there where you see that circle and we'll be putting a sewage ejector in that's going to run all the wastewater from that bathroom right on the other side of the wall there 
All right, remember we moved the, the original plumbing. The original plumbing used to be right over here. And uh, we cut the old sewage ejector pit off and the old toilet pipe and the old sink pipe that was all over there today. We just took our saws on, cut those off and we'll fill those in with stone and just concrete them shut. The sewage ejector pit, we cut the top off, we covered it with boards here so nobody steps on it tonight and breaks their leg. And we'll fill that in with stone and we'll concrete that shut and move all that plumbing over there into the new bathroom location. So we'll get back with you tomorrow and we'll show you what the final framing looks like and then we'll move on to the mechanical phase uh, on Thursday and Friday. Okay guys, we're down here for day three. Uh, yesterday we just about got our 100% framed here. We're about, I said yesterday, about 75%, 80% done. Uh, I want to show you that even professional contractors mess up. We have a blooper for you here this morning um, that our esteemed framing crew did yesterday. Let me just show you what they did and what we're going to have to do to get out of the situation. Okay, we built our wall on the floor yesterday. And as you can see down here, this wall is laying on the floor. It's right up against this wall here where we're building it, and it's tight. Up this end, the guys didn't notice, but they built right in front of the pole, too. <laughs> so now, with, now the problem is they can't slide the wall back this way to go up here and nail the top plate on. So they've trapped themselves in here like rats. So now they're going to have to uh, either drag this wall out of here completely and get it out, of, out here in an open area, or we're going to have to cut about eight inches off the off the bottom of the wall, all right, cut off the whole wall, eight inches, and then they'll be able to slide it past, and then we'll have to mend it back together in the corner, which these guys, you know, it happens. So if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. This is not rocket science. It's construction. You know, we're not operating on somebody's brain here. Or if we make a mistake, it's a life or death situation. Just adapt and overcome. So we're going to take care of that first thing this morning, get that wall up, get the rest of our exterior walls up, and then, like I said, we're going to be jumping up overhead here. We're going to be framing the skeleton that's going to go around all the duct work, which is called the soffits. We'll get them done here today, and then we're going to jump on mechanical. So I'll keep checking in and out with you here today and kind of walk you through the third day on the job here as we go. So see you in a little bit here. Okay, we're still finishing up these interior walls here. i uh, will show you here, we got a little 35-inch tall half wall that we made out of two by six that we're going to be positioning in this opening right here between between the beam and this wall here because this beam was about five feet away from the wall and it kind of out in the middle of nowhere here so we were just going to box it out but then we figured why don't we just build a little wing wall a little half wall off that pole and connect it to the full wall over here and then that pole won't so much like a pole anymore. It just kind of looked like a half wall with a with a column on the end. So we built a little section of two by six wall, and we uh, we made that 35 inches high. Uh, we make all of our half walls 35 rough. Looks like it's gonna go. All right. So there's a 36 inch future half wall. Okay guys, we got our framing up here for our soffits and that's all the ductwork framing up there. All right, we boxed right around the feed trunk, the return air trunk. There's a couple other things up there too. There's a drain line up there, two inch drain line. But that was all built to all of our interior and exterior walls. That's why we like to get all the exterior and interior walls completed before we start soffits because those soffits tie into all the interior walls and they also come down and they tie into the exterior walls. So build all of your walls. When I say all of them, I mean every single wall. Anything that you can stand up and down needs put in before you start your soffits. All right, over here we got our little 45 degree wall in here that came around our sump pump. All right, those were all interior walls. We put these these walls in here after we got our exterior walls in. All right. Same with the closet wall that we put in yesterday. They're all interior walls. But uh, we do have all of our framing completed now. You'll see up here on the ceiling too. Every two foot we have what's called banding framing where we go perpendicular to the floor joists every two foot 
and our drywall will run east to west, all right? The bandings north and south, our drywall will go across, all right? From exterior wall right over to the edge of the soffit, all right? And then every two foot, the drywall wallers will have a place to nail. All right, the banding is the very, very last thing. If you have to use banding, which we did because we had an existing drywall ceiling and we need this banding to fasten our recessed light cans to, um, you can cut that. All right, so uh, if you have to use banding, and I cover that in training as well, banding is after soffits. All right, so it's exterior walls, it's interior walls, it's soffits, and then between the soffits and the exterior walls, you'll put your banding. Up right now. No, it's gonna go up over. All right, we're banding out this room here every two foot. We got the first two up. They're putting the third one up right now. All right, and they'll finish that the whole way across over to that exterior wall at the base of the stairs. And then we'll come into the bathroom and we'll finish the final bit of framing in the bathroom, which will be banding in the bathroom ceiling. All right, there's nothing up here yet, and we'll go every two foot in the bathroom as well. All right, north and south with the banding in the bathroom. And, and that's it. So we've, uh, we've completed this. Once this banding's up out there and in this bathroom, we're 100% done. So we have two full days of framing. That's two full days of framing on this one and uh, one day of layout work where uh, me and my brother did the layout, which was the first part of this video or, or this video series, whatever it turns into. Okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, uh, we kicked it out in two days. Now, we've already started with some of the uh, electric work. All right, the first stage of the electric project is always go around and nail on all of your switch boxes and all of your outlet boxes. So, what we did here was, okay, so we got blue boxes on here everywhere. The first phase of our electric, we actually had that started already because the framing is just about wrapped up. What we're doing is we're just going around and we're nailing on our outlet boxes, all right? They got some nails in them, you just get your hammer and just nail them right to the stud. Come with the nails already in them. Uh, get those set first. We've also gone around and we've nailed on our switch boxes, all right? Nothing in these yet. We'll put on all of our switch boxes and all of our outlet boxes, and then we'll go back and we'll run the wire from box to box to box. Now you can see here we already started with some of our uh, our 12-2 wire for our outlets. We're going from box, and then we're going through the wall, and we're coming down to the next box, which is right down here. Coming in, and then we're going back out, and we're going down to the next box, which is right there, and so forth and so on. Um, not going to put any outlets on them yet. We're not going to hook any power into them yet. We're just getting our wires run from box to box to box. And here's more of these out switch boxes that are nailed on. We got a GFI box right here for our GFI outlet in our bathroom, which is going to be right above our sink, which is right here. All right, so that's the only outlet in a bathroom is your GFI circuit, okay? And there's generally just one, one outlet in a bathroom, and it's generally right at the sink. I was going to save the mechanical work and start that in the video tomorrow, but since we're already nailing boxes on, why not just show you what's going on here? Uh, once we get all of the boxes nailed on, the switch boxes and the outlet boxes, we'll like I said, we'll pull the wires from box to box to box for the outlet circuit. And we'll also go from all of our switch boxes up to all of our recessed lights that are going to be up in the ceiling. Now, we haven't started that yet, but our recessed lights are going to go between the, that banding that we put up there. We're going to be cutting holes up in the drywall wherever we want our lights, okay? I'm not sure exactly the position of them yet. We haven't laid them out yet. But once we figure it out, we'll be cutting a hole at every location, and we'll be putting our cans up inside the uh, between the floor joists, which we can't do now because the drywall's in the way. So everywhere we need a light, we have to cut a hole. Now your basement, probably 90% of basements, of homeowners that are watching this, you don't have drywall in your ceilings in your basement yet. So you're just going to be putting your recessed lights up between the floor joists. We can't see it, so we got to cut holes. All right, so that, that'll be the electric project down here. It's not nothing super fancy or, or complicated down here with the lighting circuit and the electric circuit, but again, 
I keep sending you over to the Basement Finishing University because over there I've got training for, for homeowners that want to tackle their outlets and their switches and their recess lights themselves. It's really not that hard. It's not rocket science. I mean, there are certain you know, safety precautions that you have to take. Obviously, it's electric. Um, but running electric, again, it's not brain surgery. It's something that you definitely can learn how to do yourself and save yourself a lot of money. All right, so... Uh, yeah, uh, we're also going to have plumbing on this job. We got a full bathroom. Um, we'll actually be starting on that tomorrow. Some of the some of the plumbing. We got to put that sewage ejector in the floor, the pit. Uh, we actually picked that up today. It's out here. There's our sewage ejector pit right there. All right, that whole pit's going in the floor. All right, so we have to open up the floor and put that down on the floor. There's the there's the lid for it. This whole thing goes below the concrete floor. All right, and then these pipes will come up out of the top for your sewage discharge and your vent line. So we'll be doing that as well as we'll be running the white PEX, half inch PEX. We buy that in big, big 100 foot rolls. Uh, that, that's for our hot and cold water lines. There's all of our recess lights. And we got four boxes of those. There's six in every box. You see they come with the can and they also come with the, the trim ring and the, and the can. All right, everything's in one box. There's our sewage ejector motor that's going to go down inside the sewage ejector pit. Guys, everything that you see here is from Home Depot. Like I said, we do just about 90% of our shopping for all of our basements at Home Depot. And I'm not selling Home Depot. I've got no allegiance to them. Again, they just have everything that we need for basements. Um, the lumber that we use, we're buying from a local lumber yard because it's a little bit straighter and it's easier to get a delivery from the local lumber yard than it is from Home Depot. Uh, you can get Home Depot to deliver your lumber, but it takes sometimes it takes a little longer or a day or two more to get it. And since we're on a tight schedule, uh, you know, we've decided now just to, just to use an, uh, a local lumber yard for all of our 2 by 4s our, our wall studs, and our plates. So for today, I'm going to say uh, we got a lot accomplished. We got, like I said, we wrapped up the framing 100%. Uh, we've got the electric started. Uh, we did do some more shopping. We picked up all that stuff I just showed you outside. Um, we're ready tomorrow to, to dive into uh, recess lighting, the rest of the wiring for the outlets, and start the plumbing in the bathroom. That'll be day four when we come back tomorrow. So uh, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Okay, guys, day four on this job here. Uh, I didn't get here first thing this morning. I got my guys down here today Like I told you yesterday, we were going to be working on getting those recessed lights up in that drywall ceiling and starting uh, Some of the uh, switch wiring as well yesterday. We did get into a little bit of uh, wiring for the outlets Got all the blue boxes hung like I like I showed you So uh, let me just point the camera around in here. The guys are having some lunch here. All right How you guys doing good great day. All right. All right. All right. Uh, okay, so let's just pan up overhead you can see where we cut the drywall out here, every light location so that we can get our wires from can to can. Then we just chopped out the drywall so that the back of our can could fit up between the floor joists. All right, and then we ran the wire right along our banding. We didn't go up through the drywall, we went right along the banding and we put a staple up there to hold it up above the banding. All right, so that'll, that'll all be above the drywall ceiling. So we've got about 10 cans on this side down here where our little brew area is going to be here. We have a sink down here. We've got two, two lights over top of that. You can see up through the top of the framing over the door, we've got not only our yellow 12-2 outlet wires, we're also running our switch wires and our light wires through there as well. Everything goes through the center of the 2x4s. Over here, we got another six cans up in this area. Uh, underneath the soffit where we could get them, all right, because we have a lot of duct work and stuff up there, so wherever we could get them, we shoved another can up in there as well. All right, you can see between the duct work there and the, and the edge of the soffit, we could squeak another can up in there. So we stuck three more cans up in there to go with these six out here, so uh, it won't be real dark underneath that about five foot deep soffit. All right, we did manage to get some lights underneath there. All right. You can see all of our 
switch wires coming out here. We're running our switches, uh, all of our wiring up to our cans. Everything's labeled. All right, I show you guys how to do this in the trainings too, guys. If you want to run your own electric, I do have training for this. It may look complicated, but trust me when I tell you, again, it's not brain surgery. This is something that if you watch a few videos and pay attention, you could do this yourself and save a couple thousand bucks doing your electric yourself. In the bathroom, we've got uh, one recessed light over top of the, the tub. There you can see our light fan combination. That's also got to be vented outside. So they cut a little bit more of that drywall out, and you can see right there we've got our tube connected. Our vent tube, they cut another patch over here so they could fish it over a little more. And they're just going to bring it down, down through that hole there, and we're going to run it right up and through into the outside. And I do have another video here on the YouTube channel that shows you how to vent a bathroom fan in your basement. All right, so if you want to... If you want to see how that's completed right to the outside hood, I do have a video for that. Check that out. Uh, and that's about it. You know, the, the, uh, the electric is just about 100% roughed in here on day four. And tomorrow we're going to start some plumbing of that sink that's going to be right over there. All right, we already got our uh, outlet down there for our pump. The sink's going to have to be on a pump to pump the water out of the sink because we're below grade here. We have to pump everything up and out with pumps down here. And then we've got our GFI outlet there, which will be above the sink. And uh, we'll get that plumbing for the sink done tomorrow, as well as uh, we're going to pick up the four-foot shower tomorrow. And we'll get that four-foot shower in here uh, probably Monday or Tuesday, because we're not going to jack the floor open until Monday. Monday, we'll jack open the drain line for the shower. We'll also come in here and we will jack the floor open to put our new sewage ejector pit in, which I talked about yesterday. We'll do all that on Monday and then uh, we can set the shower, put it all together, and uh, we can connect our sewage ejector, vent line, and discharge line as well to the existing home's plumbing. All right, so that's uh, day number four. And uh, tomorrow will be day number five. That'll complete one full week and we'll have probably most of the plumbing water lines roughed in tomorrow as well as uh, we'll sew up the rest of this rough-in electric as well. And then we'll be ready for our insulation, uh, which that'll go in probably next Tuesday or Wednesday. And then we're ready for drywall, okay? So it's going to take us roughly seven, eight days for this one to have everything inside the framing, complete all the mechanical work done. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, or possibly even tomorrow, we'll be working on getting tapped into that ductwork up there so that we can get four feeds four six inch feeds and flex line into the uh all the finished areas so that we're tapping into the central air conditioning and heating system all right and then return air as well we'll have that all roughed in too by next wednesday and then we'll be ready for the drywall phase of the job so i hope this video is helping you guys i know it's lengthy uh, i want to take you the whole way through this job we're going to go through the drywall stage together we're going to go through the trim stage together um setting the bathroom fixtures together, um, everything that goes into this job here. Uh, we're going to condense it so that you have a broad spectrum, a good clean view of everything that it takes to put one of these jobs together. And then you can determine whether or not you want to do it yourself or if you want to do parts of it yourself and sub other parts out. But in the end, uh, even if you're subbing it all out and you're not even doing any of your basement, at least you'll know, you know, the real concept, how it should really be done. That way you can keep an eye on your contractor and you'll know if your contractor's pulling the wool over your eyes, which is, what's that worth? I mean, that's worth something by itself too. Uh, but if you are gonna attempt to uh, do the framing, the electric, the plumbing, the HVAC work, you're gonna save thousands of dollars in labor. Um, I suggest you sub out that drywall and we'll talk more about that when, when we get to the drywall phase. But uh, my main goal is to save you money and to make you aware and to teach you exactly how to do a basement yourself and to do it correctly so we'll be back down here tomorrow we'll bring the camera down one more time and we'll uh we'll film tomorrow's uh you know tasks so that you can see a little bit further what's going on next monday tuesday and wednesday we'll cap it off and we'll be ready for drywall by wednesday so uh i'll see you back here tomorrow and we'll, and we'll pick it up uh, from where we left off here today okay guys day five down here I'm going to be down here and check out what the guys are up to. Uh, going to be working on the plumbing today. We got the jack hammer going down here this morning. We're jacking out the new sewage ejector pit. Uh, 
So we'll see a little bit of that action as well as the HVAC is being put in. Um, gonna get all the feeds in the ceiling like we said yesterday. So uh, let's turn the camera on here and get in here and see how they're doing. It's gonna be a little loud in here. Take just a five minute break, man. Okay, guys, so we got the jackhammer there. My nephew Nate's, uh, he's jacking out the circle that will become the uh, the sewage ejector opening. All right, there's the pit right there. We're gonna be sticking that down in the floor. So he's gotta jack that open. He's gotta jack over to the toilet and over to the shower drain. So that's why we rented the Brute, commonly known as Jackie Chan on our job. So we rented Jackie Chan for the morning. We love him, I love Jackie Chan. All right, and over here you can see we've got some of the uh, mechanical work already done in here for our plumbing. All right, we got the hot and cold water PEX fittings down there. You can see he's got things labeled there, cold and hot. That's going to be for our beverage brew sink that we have going in here. We've got a uh, a, uh, a vent to the left going up to a studer vent. You see that studer vent on top there? We're allowed to use a studer on this sink in our township, so. We're studering that sink, and then we've got our discharge line, which is going to go up and go over and tie in up here uh, to an existing sewage line that's up in this storage area. Okay, so we're going to do that tie-in as well. So we got the uh, the sink done there. I think we got some, yeah, we got some HVAC in here as well. All right, we're coming across there. You can see that silver flex line. We had to cut a patch to get up there, cut into the top of the uh, feed trunk, snake our flex across there, and you can see right up there we've got a 4x6 boot up there, which is going to be feeding the heat and the air conditioning into the, uh, into the finished space. Down here we've got another one that's not quite done yet, but you can see there a little better how he's coming across in the flex and uh, right there he's got the boot hanging he hasn't mounted that one yet all right that the other one down there was mounted so there's two of our feeds over here we've got uh, another feed as well all right so there we go we got the uh, the third feed here that's another six inch feed we're gonna mount that and that's coming from the duct work way over and above that beam in the other room all right and this HVAC stuff it's really easy to do. Uh, I've got detailed videos over at the Basement Finishing University. I have a whole uh, two-part series on HVAC installation where I show you exactly how he's doing those tie-ins to get this over here. And here we're going to have a four-inch feed in here as well for the bathroom. All right. You can see Jonathan also has us ready here for our PEX fittings down here. All right. We got our cold on the right and hot on the left here. All right, right here's the toilet line down, and that'll be our nipple coming out for the toilet supply. And then he's got another T on here where he's going to go through, and he's eventually going to end up over here in this area. And I'm standing in the shower here, in this area right here where we're going to have our shower valve. So we do got the plumbing going here today. He's also got his drain line roughed in and over, ready to drop into the sewage ejector pit when all that's done later today. So. These guys got to get jackhammering down here, so I'm not going to run my mouth anymore, but this is day five. We're trying to sew up the mechanical work uh, today, all right? So this is Friday, the fifth day on this job, um, and I think we got a, a, a hell of a lot of work done down here in five full days. So when we come back next week, it'll be Monday, we'll be sewing up all the plumbing, uh, we'll be sewing up the HVAC overhead, and we'll be finishing up those drain lines and water lines as well. So uh, I'll see you guys uh, back here on Monday. Okay guys, it's Monday morning here. Uh, we're back down on this job. We're hoping to get out of here possibly by tomorrow, Tuesday, but if not, we may roll into a few hours on Wednesday. Uh, today we're going to 
uh, get our plumbing in underneath our floor in our bathroom. Uh, we're also working on our other mechanical stuff, our, uh, our electric. I do have a sub panel going in on this basement because we did not have a breaker box in the basement. On this particular job, the breaker panel was in the garage on the first floor on the other end of the house. So we had to bring down a 100 amp service cable and uh, bring ourselves in a brand new sub panel box, a 100 amp sub panel box with a bunch of new breaker spaces so that we can put all the stuff that's designated to the basement in that box, okay? We just didn't have uh, the means to get up to the garage with, you know, seven, eight home runs and uh, do it in the garage. So we're gonna bring a, a, a service cable down. He's getting a brand new sub panel down here as well, so we're working on that. Uh, I think we wrapped up a lot of the uh, HVAC on Friday. All right, so let me spin the camera around. We'll take a look at what's going on down here today. Uh, day number six. All right, so let's start over here in the bathroom. Uh, we did get the floor jacked open. You saw us starting it yesterday over there with the sewage ejector pit on the other side of the bathroom wall. We got that out. We got it dug out. As you can see, there's piles of stone everywhere in here. Uh, a lot of shale. Uh, a lot of shale in the soil in this particular part of the state, and we hit it yesterday. Uh, we did dig out our trench coming from our what will be our shower drain in the center here of our four foot shower. It's going to come across. You can see down there we already have a three to two Y down there. We're going to come across with our shower drain and tie into that part of the Y there, the two inch Y. And then our toilet is going to be right here. You can see we have our flange here and our 90 degree uh, three inch fitting which is going to turn it down and into that fitting there and then straight underneath the concrete there underneath the wall and it'll pop into the pit right there you can see how that how that's going to make its journey there from the toilet and the shower so we'll get that all connected today we also got our shower valve in yesterday uh, Jonathan was working on that he's got the set in here at uh, 48 inches off the floor 16 inches off the outside wall that's all plumbed in there all right, so uh, we got that in there. Uh, we also got our toilet cold water stub down. You see that's coming off the cold line there all the way down to our uh, temporary nipple and uh, cap down there. All right, these, these lines will all be pressurized before drywall goes in, meaning there's gonna be water in them and they're gonna have full pressure. And down over here, we've got our inch and a half drain line that's heading over towards the sewage ejector pit for our vanity and our hot and cold water lines coming down to those uh, temporary caps and nipples as well all right so that's all in there hi John Hello. and John right now he's roughing in a feed the only way we could get uh, the air central air conditioning and heating into here into this bathroom was to come through an unfinished storage room where he's at over there on the ladder and we're going to bring in a uh, four by six um, uh, boot straight boot coming through the wall which will feed us our uh, air conditioning and heating in here there's no return in a bathroom morning john morning. and again all the framing is completed 100 percent and now we're just uh Finishing up the mechanical work. So, John, what do you what are you thinking, man? You think we can get this thing rough done by the, by quits tomorrow, or you think we're going to roll into Wednesday? Yeah, all depends. I, I I think we could get it today. But I think we be done by Tuesday. By Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So we're putting our puzzle together down there with our PVC fittings. Now, this sewage ejector pit is vented all right that's this pit will be vented outside and since our vanity sink our shower and our toilet are within six feet of the vent of the pit we don't have to individually vent the shower and the sink okay we we can use the vent from the pit now you you can vent them if you want but code has it, if a fixture is within six feet of a vent, it doesn't need an additional vent. Now, if this shower was, you know, 10 feet away from that sewage ejector pit, or if the sewage ejector pit in the other room was 20 feet away, you know, we'd have to vent the individual fixtures. But we kind of lucked out on this one here because we're only about six inches in on the other side of the bathroom wall with that two-inch vent going up, so we're in good shape. All right, so... Uh, it looks good so far. All right. All right. We determined that the center of our drain and our shower is going to be 
15 and three quarters off the back wall this way and off the front wall coming back is 24 inches because it's a 48 inch shower it's 24 that way but coming off the wall the back wall is 15 and three quarters and the reason we know that is because we looked at the specs on the sheet that our shower came with and I think I've told you that guys before uh, that you should always look at the specs on your on your shower when you get it it's written right on the back all you have to do is uh, it's written right on the box rather which model you have you just pick up which model you have on your spec sheet here find which model you have and then down here it'll tell you what your dimensions will be for C and for B B and C give you the center of your drain and we find we find that information right over here in this chart all right every shower pan every shower that you buy comes with one of these to, to show you how to plumb in your drain and that's exactly what we did we're also running speaker cable down here for the homeowner to uh, what five locations guys yeah we had uh, two front wall or three front wall locations and what two rear rear locations for surround yep at the homeowner's request we don't do that on every job but that's just one of the other things that we're running uh, today we've got the speaker wires to run uh, we've also got the coax for the cable TV we're running some of that um, and just getting the rest of our home runs which are your main lines from your panel box uh, out to your switches and your outlets we got a couple more home runs to get back here into our panel box today uh, again, you can see there we have about nine coming in so far. Got a couple of them hooked up here for some temporary lighting and whatnot. All right, so we're grabbing some lunch here. What's for lunch? Oh, look at that. So we do eat good down here on, on our jobs. <laughs> oh, look at that. Lunch of champions. <laughs> All right, so I just wanted to show you what was going on back here in the floor in the bathroom. Uh, we, we did get our shower pan in there. We set it over top of our drain just to make sure that we had the drain centered on that pan, okay? And it is trapped down there in a two-inch trap. Again, it's not vented right here. I normally would come across right here and vent into this wall and go up, but since I'm less than six feet away from the two-inch vent in the pit right over there, I don't have to vent this shower separately. Same goes with the, uh, the sink drain. It's only about three and a half feet away from the pit so this piece of pipe coming down if it would have been further away I would have vented it right in that pipe right there and taken it up and did, tied in uh, to the ejector in the back room up higher but everything's within six feet so we're within code there you see we got our toilet line our three inch line turned up all right and we're just going to put uh, we're going to be putting this which is our toilet flange right down on top of that all right, and then that will concrete around that. All right, that'll go like that. And then we'll concrete all this shut. Fill it up with dirt and stone, and we'll, we'll, we'll fill it up with about three or four inches of concrete. All right, the center of that toilet flange is 13 inches off the wall. Okay, from the rough framing to the center, I like to do 13. And we centered the uh, toilet between the vanity, the 30-inch vanity, and the, uh, the edge of the shower over here, the indentation here for the shower. All right, so we have a trap 2-inch line running down into a 3-inch line for the shower. We got a 3-inch line running into a 4-inch pipe, which uh, the 4-inch goes right through and down into the pit. All right, and that's how we get our drain lines in here. The, uh, the sink drains inch and a half. It goes in through the wall, and it's going to drop into the vent line that's going to be coming out of the top of the sewage ejector pit once we get the vent line done we'll tie this inch and a half sink drain right into the two inch um vertical two inch vent uh that's coming out of the ejector and that's how our sink will drain all right and there's our hot and cold water lines for our sink and our drop down stub down for our toilet half inch and right over to our shower valve, right into the valve. We came out of the top of the valve with hard pipe, all right, with copper. Always come out of the top of your valve in copper and right up to our shower head. Everything's got temporary caps and nipples on it, half inch cap and nipples so that we can turn the water on, uh, tie into the main water, turn it on and pressurize all of our water lines. And then that way we can check for leaks at any of our PEX unions where we have PEX rings, all those PEX T's, uh, we can check for leaks. Uh, all of our 90 PEX fittings here, our valve, we can check check to make sure that everything's good before drywall goes in. 
Okay, we got some electric going on here. We're sewing up our switch boxes. What we like to do is we like to put temporary switches on that'll be used during the painting process. So that way if they get paint on them, it's not gonna, we'll, you know, we'll just dispose of them after the job and we'll put dimmer switches on afterwards. But uh, we like to hook up all of our wires, put our temporary switches on to make sure that all of our lighting works before we drywall. So we get, we get all of our plumbing in and pressurize it to make sure all of our plumbing's working and nothing's leaking. And with our electric, we like to get all of our switches wired in with power, two temporary switches, and then test all of our lights. So to make sure all of our recessed light cans are working properly and that everything's gonna fire up correctly after drywall. It's better to find out any mistakes right now while you can still see everything than to wait until you've completely drywalled your basement and then you can't get to anything and basically you're screwed. So I recommend if you're doing your own electric, your own plumbing, that you do this. You pressurize your water pipes, you test your sewage ejector, you fire it off a couple times, you uh, check all your switches, all of your lights. Now the only thing we really don't test is the outlets. All right, the outlets, uh, that's, that's pretty simple wiring. It's just going from box to box to box and back to the panel box. It's pretty hard to screw that up, but switches, they're a little more complicated. There's a little more theory to wiring switches than there is with outlets. As you can see in this box here, how many wires are coming in here. We got five wires coming into this box. There's gonna be three switches in here, and there's a certain way that this is gonna to need to be wired. So. We want to make sure we pull all of our three-way circuits correctly and have our hot wires everywhere that we need them. Everything's grounded properly. All the commons are connected properly. And the only way we can find that out is to go ahead and pre-install these switches and test the circuits to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be with all of our recessed lights. All right, and we go over all of that at the Basement Finishing University in complete detail if you want to learn how to do this stuff. It's just... There's a, lot, there's a lot to listen to and there's a lot to look at when you go through the training um, because there's all kinds of different switches. There's single switches, three-way switches, four-way switches, you know, you, and, and everything ha everything's wired just a little bit different to the switch up to the, up to the fixtures. So, uh, you know, but if you want to learn how to do this, I mean, a, an electrician's going to charge you probably $2,500 or more depending upon the size of the job. And they normally go by how many lights there are, how many switches, how many outlets. They'll, they'll, they'll count them all up, how much wire, um, and then they'll give you a price. I mean, it could be anywhere from $2,500 up to $5,000 for, for an electrician to come in and wire your basement, rough it in like this, and then come back and put all the finished switches and plate covers on. We can teach you how to do this stuff. And uh, it's not, again, it's not rocket science. Okay hey guys, day seven here, Tuesday. Uh, we are wrapped up here today. Uh, got a few things left. Let me run around here, shout out these last couple things that we've done here today to get this ready for drywall. All right, so we did pick up our pump. This is a, call this a laundry pump. You can run a washing machine, you can run a laundry room off this. It's just gonna be running the, uh, uh, the brew sink. Now here's the brew sink, they picked this up here. Uh, that little pump's gonna sit right underneath of it. And everything's going to be uh, draining into that, and that's going to be vented as well, and have a discharge hooked up to it. All right, so we'll have that put in here today. Um, you know, we, we won't actually install the sink till after drywall, but uh, we'll have the rest of the rough and plumbing for the uh, discharge line hooked up in there today. Correct, Jonathan? That's it. You got it. Okay. All right, uh, some other small things that we were looking at at the over the course of this video. This is where the original sewage ejector used to be. We filled it with stone and we just uh, we just put concrete in there, so that's still wet. And that's where the toilet drain was coming out, and that's where the sink line was coming out, uh, all concreted shut. All right, so uh, we can once that concrete sets up, we're ready for flooring right over top of those areas. Back in the bathroom. Uh, we've concreted our floor shut around our toilet flange. That's all the plumbing's in and connected under the floor now. Uh, we've got our shower base set, our 48 inch shower base set. We've got two of the walls on. We still have to set the last wall. I've got the other panel sitting right over there against the wall. And uh, all I have to do is cut a uh, 
a three inch hole in it and we can set this last panel for the shower and then that will be done as well okay in the back room back there we do have the sewage ejector all hooked up with the vent line and discharge line check valve ball valve that's all done back there if you, if you want to check out how we hook up the sewage ejectors um, we do have a video on just how to install the ejector and hook up the uh, the check valve the ball valve and connect everything to the pump that's over at the basement finishing university all right so all the rest of the uh, electric you can see all the cans are turned on all the six inch cans I'll spin the camera around there you can see they're all lit up we tested them all we do have our temporary switches on all right so we did hook up some switches here so we can control these uh, and at the base of the steps here we've got two two temporary switches one of them is going to control the code light at the bottom of the stairs that would be that one and then the other one here yeah the other one here is controlling these six lights here in the play area all right, we do have a light in the shower. We always put a recessed light with a, uh, with a shower lens cover on that uh, over top of our showers just to get some direct light in the shower. Then we also have a fan light combination up there, which ha has a light in it. And then we're also going to have a, uh, a vanity light up here. We ran a wire uh, in the storage room, which we'll bring through the wall after we drywall. Then we'll control the, uh, the vanity light right above the sink. So we've got a vanity light, a light fan combination and a six inch can in our bathroom. We also talked about the fact that we're gonna have one GFI outlet circuit right above the uh, right above the vanity. All right, we also have a four by six grate right up above where our toilet will be. All right, pan right down right above our toilet up there about a 16 inches down from the ceiling. We have our feed coming in for our bathroom. That's all hooked up. We've got uh, a four by 10 out here in the play area over here in the brew area we have a 4x10 right there and you can see we put blocks of 2x4 all around the vent opening that way when we put our grate on our screws will have solid wood to go up inside you know those uh, the damper controls that are on the grate cover itself need to need to hit wood so we just box ours in real nice uh, with, with 2x4 the whole way around got another one down here in the TV area okay so there's our four feeds the return air we will actually tap into and connect. You can see we have the we have the uh, the actual grate up there now. The boot coming through the wall, but it's not connected to anything yet. We won't make the connection back there in the mechanical room to the return air until after the drywall is done because we don't want to be sucking dust back into the return air system. So we do that after we paint and if basically when we're when we're just about done with the job, we'll hook up the return air. But you have to have return air. All right, so that's pretty much all of our plumbing for our sinks, all roughed in, ready to go for drywall. Uh, we've got our pump on site. We wanted to make sure that the pump was gonna work out underneath the sink and all that our plumbing that we had roughed in was gonna work before we got the drywall in here because we wanted to make darn sure that we didn't have to move anything after drywall. We don't wanna be tearing drywall out. We've got all of our plumbing back underneath the stairs here. We'll go back here in the storage room. You can see we've got our we're back here in the storage area now. There's that flux coming across and feeding the vent inside the bathroom right up there. Goes right up into the bathroom wall there. And that last pipe that's up there, that piece of flux, that's the bathroom fan. And that's coming off the bathroom fan in the bathroom through the storage room and up and outside into the yard. Uh, it goes right out through the side of the house and then we should have an exhaust hood up there already, right John? Yep. It's already connected? Yes, sir. Very good, because that's all part of the mechanical work too. So uh, we're looking really, really good here. We're looking really, really good. We've got all of our electric, all of our home runs back here, all hooked up, coming down here into the top of our new sub panel. The only thing that we got to run now down through this big Romex right here is our main 100 amp service cable, which we can get to from the storage room back here. Okay, we also got all of our speaker wires in over here. He's going to have a uh, stereo rack over here. We've got everything coming in over here. We got our five speaker wires. We've got uh, another box over here that's got the uh, the coax cable, and it also has the uh, HDMI cable that's running up to the TV. And up here where the TV is going to be hanging, we've got the other end of that uh, HDMI cable coming out up here. And uh, he'll be able to hang his TV, plug it in. This will be a 110 outlet here. And then he'll have his HDMI cable running up here from the cable box. All right, so we have all the speaker locations in. 
Uh, we got two rear speakers up here in the ceiling as well. We just uh, have wires up there. We've made a map of where these wires are because we're going to drywall over top of them and then we'll be able to cut them out later and put the in ceiling speakers in. They'll be in ceiling speakers up in the drywall. And the three speakers on the front we've made a map of as well. Uh, we got this all quilled up. We're just going to cut into the drywall later and then we'll find this wire later. And we'll be able to uh, put the in wall speakers in the front. There'll be a center channel and a right and a left front channel uh, inside the drywall as well. All right, that's all stuff that I consider mechanical. Um, I guess you could, you could group that in with the electric because it's, you know, you're running wires. Um, that all has to be done before you can call the drywallers in if you're subbing it out or if you're doing your own drywall before you can start drywall. Every bit of the rough and mechanical work has to be done. So everything is completed and we are just about ready for drywall here this week. So uh, day seven, all right? I guess you could say day eight would be the day that we insulate and I'll take about two hours. So, you know, there will be a bit of a day eight for us before drywall. Okay, one other minor thing I guess I could point out here since we're looking at everything before drywall. We did go ahead and put some two by fours in the wall, all right, some blocking, all right? And the reason we put that blocking in there is he's gonna have some upper cabinets there and we put the blocking in where we knew we were gonna be screwing the cabinets to the wall. We did it here and he's also gonna have some cabinets over top of his brew sink, which is right right there. We put some blocking up there as well for the uh, for the brew sink. So, uh, you know, if, if you know where your cabinets are gonna go, it's not really necessary. You absolutely do not have to put blocking in for cabinets. Cabinetry can go up to just the wall studs that are there every 16 inches. But hey, if you if you got the time and you got extra wood laying around, it doesn't hurt to put some blocking in for things like cabinets. And uh, other things you could block for would be like grab bars in bathrooms, toilet paper holders, towel bars, uh, any place where you know you don't want to use hollow wall anchors because I hate hollow wall anchors. I hate using them and uh, I'd rather hit wood whenever I can. You can also put blocking in uh, in your closets. If you know where your closet made clips and things like that are going to go, you can put a row of blocking in so you don't have to use hollow wall molly bolts or anything like that. You can just use screws right in the wood. Nothing's better than just hitting the meat of the wood rather than using a, a hollow wall line. So one other thing I could throw at you there. I know it's a real minuscule minor thing, but hey, while we're hitting everything else, we might as well talk about that as well. All right, so really, after today, all we have left is the insulation in the walls, which is scheduled to go in on Thursday. All right, so Thursday, insulation. Friday, stock the drywall, start hanging the drywall. All right, so the mechanical work took us seven days. All right, let's say seven days. I don't consider the insulation mechanical. That'll take them about two hours to stuff these walls and get it ready for drywall. Again, that'll be Thursday. So. This is everything from day one, before we turned on the saw, before we started framing. This is from layout on the floor. We, we, we've gone from walking in here, you know, fresh day one, no lines on the floor, no layout work done, all the way up to, all the way up to the drywall stage. All right, so now you should have that clear picture. Maybe, again, not all the little nitty gritty things, because I, I didn't show you every phase in complete entirety. I, I couldn't in this video, but I wanted to show you what it actually takes to get from point A to point B in a basement project so that you know, you know, the chronological order of things, plus it'll tell you whether or not you feel after watching this that you might be able to tackle some of these phases of the project yourself. Or you may want to tackle the whole project by yourself. I mean, I have the training for everything, but the purpose of this particular video or this video series, whatever it turns into, I don't know yet. It's, it's running kind of long. I might break this up was to get you from point A to point B from the beginning of the job all the way up to drywall in your mind. So you can make the determination of whether or not this is something that you'd like to do yourself. So guys, I hope this video helped you. I am going to have a part two where we're going to take you from drywall right to the final, you know, shaking of the hands with the homeowner, project 100% completed, hand out for a check, we're out of here. All right, I'm going to take you from drywall right to the final, right to the final nail on the wall, okay? Uh, in part two. So I'm going to get this up on YouTube first and then probably within the month I'll have the other second part of this up. And you'll get a notification to the second video if you subscribe to the Basement Finishing Man's YouTube channel and if you tick that notification bell it'll tell you when the next video is out. So again 
I'm Eddie Case. If you like this video, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, it helps out our channel. And if you haven't subscribed to the Basement Finishing Man YouTube channel yet, please do. We got a lot more good basement videos coming your way, and I'll see you in the next video.